Grinding down the American Tank Destroyer line is going to give you two different options. You have the T-110E3 and the T-110E4. Both absolutely fantastic and devastating vehicles to roll up against on the battlefield. Which one you grind for is always a tricky decision, and in today's video I'll be letting you know which of the two I like better, their playstyles and overall capabilities, so you can know what's best to go for. First thing I should mention is when grinding down the line, always start with the E4. This is quite common sense. We can see if you go to the Hellcat, T25-2, and then the T28 prototype, you can simply split down to the T28 and then go to the 95 and E3. That way, you can basically cover two lines with one stone. It's way, way easier. Now, technically, you could do the Jacks and then the T25 AT and then the T28, but you're going to be grinding a lot of extra XP, unlocking a lot of guns that you don't necessarily need to do, at least in the early game. So, that's my advice. I would go for the T28 Proto and then skip down to the T28. I think it is more expensive if you go from the Proto to the T28, but it's still going to be faster in the end. We are going to start off with the easier of the bunch, which is the E3. Depending on your skill level, this is either going to be a better tank than the E4 or a worse tank. But when I say worse tank for your skill level, it doesn't mean it's bad. Like, I think the E4, if you know how to use it properly, is absolutely insane and honestly triumphs any other one of the best tier 10s in the game. And the E3 is also crazy good. It's got high alpha damage. It's got a lot of great things going for it. The only problem I have with the E3 is that it does have a decent chunk less damage per minute than the E4, but it also features a lot higher alpha with kind of mediocre dispersion. And the problem is when you miss a shot in this vehicle with a longer reload, it hurts a lot more. And in that regard, it can be a bit tricky. But the advantage the E3 has is obviously the fact that it hits a lot harder, and it also has much more robust frontal protection. Its lower plate is around 280 to 50 millimeters thick, meaning that depending on what angle it's at and who's shooting at you, they might just bounce your lower plate, which is kind of funny. The uh, armor is just crazy good on this vehicle. Same for the hatch as well. The hatch on this tank is very troll, and a lot of people will bounce it. So sometimes people like to go wide here. I doubt that's going to be the case for this game, so I'm just going to move up. There you go. We got an enemy E100 who goes right through my frontal protection. We actually also have a VK-72. Thankfully, I did not get penned as the VK shot our Super Conqueror. The good news is that we are quite safe here as of now at least. I'm not too worried. The E75 just got absolutely crapped on, and we're going to aim it on that E75. I'm just going to load an HE. However, that shell does not go where I want it to. What's even more interesting is the fact that the E75 drives forwards, gets shot for all of his health, and then says, I know what to do. I'm going to drive towards the enemy that just absolutely obliterated me. Very uh, interesting play. Now we have the E100, and this is a super easy shot. This is where the E3 does great. When you're hauled down, and you're in a position like this, where your lower plate is hidden, and you're only showing the top part of your vehicle hull down, there's really not much you can do to this tank. I mean, yeah, you can load heat, you can try to pen the mantlet, there's a lot of things you can try to do, but it's just going to be a very, very tricky pen for the most part, which allows this tank to dominate. So we have the E100, he's just not tall enough for us to be able to see at that current angular. Well, that's fine, we're going to move up a bit, we're going to aim it right on the e 100 roof, and there you go. Super easy pen for 612. We've brought what was a full health vehicle quite low at this point. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move over to help out our teammate in the Ag Panzer against the VK-72 over here. So the Ag is indeed going to shoot, we're going to roll around the corner, we're going to aim it on his lower plate and get a nice 640 damage shell. We're also going to put on our adrenaline. The reason I'm going to do this is hopefully I can reload fast enough that we can get indeed another shell into the shag before he's able to do anything to my teammate. But we got a very, very unlucky shot. Not able to cut through his track wheel. Thankfully, doesn't matter too much. We tracked him in place, which allowed our teammate to still get the finishing shell and clear him from the game. We have the enemy uh, VK-72. We're going to get a nice 620 shot into his tank. And at this point, it's obviously going to be an incredibly easy victory. We've already dealt over 3,000 damage. We've already supported our team a lot. And it's just a great showcase 
of where the E3 is so dangerous. And there you go. Nice 660 shell to finish off the VK. So that was a great game. The E3, it's just simple. You bonk people, you sit hall down, and you get the job done. There's not much really else needed to say. We only really messed up one shot in that battle, and that was the shell on the Yag. I probably should have just loaded gold as it would have penned, but I didn't think it was necessary. Either way, very easy, almost 4,000 damage results. And you can kind of see where the E3 is quite dominant. If you just get hull down against the E100 and VK there, they can no longer push you. You are basically impervious, and the fact that you have good DPM, penetration, and alpha makes it very hard to deal with you. We basically low rolled every shot in that game. You probably didn't even realize my alpha was 680. I don't think we got a single roll that was even close to that. We were sitting more like 620 to 640, which was kind of annoying, but we still did fine. We still got out a lot of damage, and it still shows easily where the E3 is such a good vehicle. And then we move on to the T110E4. Now, the advantages of this tank are, first of all, it does feature a turret. The E3 doesn't have one of these, and that alone is a pretty big disadvantage. Having a turret not only allows you to have more stabilization when turning the tank itself, because instead of having to move the hull to aim, you just move the turret, which is much better for accuracy on move. But it also allows you to poke corners without exposing your track wheels, which are obviously super weak. The other advantage of having a turret is just the fact that it's obviously a turret. It's harder to flank you, it's harder to get to your side, uh, which is just a big advantage. The DPM on the E4 is quite a bit higher, at 3,000 base rather than 2,700. It's got a little bit worse, it's honestly basically the same dispersion between the two. I can't really say much there. Alpha damage is way, way lower as we can see. It's 630 instead of 680, which gives you a 12.6 second reload instead of a 15 second reload. That is a big advantage. Gun depression wise, this sits at 6 degrees where the E3 sits at 8. Big advantage here is mobility, 37 km per hour top speed, and this tank is actually quite fast. It accelerates up to speed very quickly, which is always a super duper nice thing because you can get into the battle faster. The E4 features very solid armor on the turret. Its hatch is quite a bit smaller than the E3's, but it's also quite a bit weaker. So that is something you'll have to keep in mind. Overall, the armor on the E4 is definitely not as good when hauled down. First of all, it's harder to get this tank hauled down. And that's because the E4 has 6 degrees of gun depression, where the E3 has a much better 8 degrees. The big advantage of the E4 is just the fact that it's much more mobile, and it does have a punchier gun due to the DPM advantage. I definitely like the E4's playstyle better. It's just a much more flexible tank due to the turret, the overall design, and uh, it's definitely going to do a lot better in certain situations where you couldn't have done that in an E3, but there are certain maps, let's say like Dead Rail, for example, or Mines, where needing that gun depression can make a big difference. So it is a very map-dependent choice between the two, but I would definitely say in most situations, I think the E4 can do a better job if you know what you're doing. So we have a BZ-75 in front of us, and we're going to even right on his lower plate. Unfortunately, shell goes just a little bit high. Something I will say about both the E3 and the E4 is that they feature very troll guns, and they like to derp a lot, which can be quite annoying. We are going to aim in on the lower plate of that BZ, and there you go. Our ridiculously high level of heat pen buttered right through his lower plate. That is obviously a big advantage of having a lot of heat pen, is being able to cut through enemy armor with very little trouble. So we have the enemy E5, we're going to aim it on his tank... There you go, 550 shot. Now I'm going to ignore all of this and move up right over here. Hopefully we don't get shot by the BZ. I guess we're going to find out. E100's kind of blocking us, but that's okay. We're going to aim it on the Kron up top. Never mind, the Kron is dead. Wow, that enemy team got obliterated. All right, well, we are going to roll around the corner, and we'll see if that E5's still here. I would predict that they still have tanks up top as well, and to be spotted. What the heck am I looking at? Alright, well this is a little cringe, not gonna lie. When I say a little, I mean a lot. We have the enemy super conk, we have the E5. I think I'm gonna go for the Hori as of right now. They just have way too many vehicles scattered around the map that I don't really want to deal with. So, let's try and go up top the bridge. The Hori is on the side that we can get a shell into, there you go. Nice 607 shot. I'm just going to pull up so the Hori cannot see me. There you go. Nice. Okay. 
So he is already at the same health we are, which is quite good. And the IS-7, you and Hundred have both made it up the bridge as well, which is also very good for us. So I'm just going to make my way up here, aim it on the Hori. We're going to load in a gold shell, and there you go, he's dead. All right, pretty solid stuff so far, i got to be honest. We're at 2,300 damage. We have the E5, and not able to hit the E5 yet, but if we wedge our tank just down this little bit, we're not able to HEM at that angle, but I'll still take a 576 roll. Let's put on our adrenaline, as there was a vehicle last I saw over here. However, it looks like it moved. Probably was the 121B. We still have plenty of health left, and we actually have the Super Conk right in front of us, so I'm just going to wait for him to show me his track. Ah. Yeah, sometimes I don't understand how shells don't pen. I mean, that was a fairly easy shot if you ask me, but I guess I'm wrong. Either way, having that turret definitely is quite an advantage here, because that 121B uh, just can't get around us, and all that's left now is the enemy Super Conqueror, who is obviously not doing very well at all. We're going to reload. We are not able to actually HE the Super Conk, but that's fine. We still got a 667 shell and a very easy win, dealing over 4,200 damage. We can see we're having the turret, the mobility, and the DPM allowed us to get out a lot of damage there. I think both tanks are fantastic, and really it's down to what playstyle you want. I think if you want a more mobile, more active playstyle, the E4 is the way to go. I think if you want a more haul down, laid back, and chill, high alpha playstyle, then go for the E3. Both are great choices, highly dependent on what you are looking for. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video, and make sure to click that subscribe button down below. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.